we are doing a little weekend in the life here. We're in quarantine, but it's unofficial in Mexico. We have been asked nicely by the president of Mexico and the head of health here to please stay in as much as we can and to keep our lives small and to wash our hands as much as possible and just like keep it together. And I've taken that invitation to heart because so many people I know are in countries where they've had their liberties taken away from them. They're forced inside. Nothing is open. They can't work. They have no money. In some cases, they're not even allowed to leave the house in any way, like in India. And I think, why not just like play it nice? So right now, we're actually on our way because there is no like food bank system here in Puerto. But some local people have set up some handouts because people don't have work and people are there's many people in a situation now okay chunkless where they're going like one day with food one day without so we're trying to put together these boxes that will give one person food for two weeks they're going through uh, Andrea who owns Bonita Bull we go to Bonita Bull a lot and she's putting them together today she's doing 24 boxes a week they'll be eligible people will be eligible to buy one online for about 350 pesos which is like 20 American dollars and it will have you know a bunch of like rice and beans and pasta tomatoes tuna cans but also some things like fresh tortillas onion and garlic for cooking in them and they're quite sweet and cute and it's easy to donate and easy to get one of these boxes in the right people's hands there's other initiatives going on here but this is the one that's most local for us and dearest to our hearts so me and Finn here, who's walking chanclas up ahead, we're on our way to donate. Also, check this art out. Viva Mexico. Did you get my message? Yeah, receive it. They're doing the boxes at Bonito Bowl. So how do you do? You buy all this thing and you bring to them? No, they're going to set it up now where you spend like 338 pesos. 350 mas o menos and it, yeah they give away 24 boxes a week and so you can just go online and, and pay like 350 pesos she needs a new collar she's so cute do you want her? <laughs> actually you're like laughing but <laughs> I might have signed a house <gasps> somebody to love stinky chanclas I'm not into La Punta, but it's like a two-room, I mean, huge garden. And he wants a dog? Of course, it's my house then. Well, the longest I want. Oh, then it's going to be your dog. Then you're going to take chanclas. You see how this is going to work? Okay, I have to go. I haven't to told anybody, but we love chanclas, but she's going to be maybe too big for our life. Bye, we love you in your rental. You need a new car. She always has the biggest car. Look how big this car is. Okay, so the story with chanclas is we... But the issue with chanclas is I said that we needed a small dog for a reason. I just don't have the time in my schedule with a toddler for a big dog. I can't go to the beach every day and walk this dog. And after chanclas got better from being sick, she suddenly grew like a weed. Like, I mean, she gained like more than two kilos in a week. She just like grew, 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 and she's become a totally different dog, and now the vet is saying that she's gonna be 18 kilos in the end, so she's gonna be a big dog that needs walks. She's getting more energy and needing more walks, and she's just gonna need more. It's gonna be more to wash and more bigger dog around the house and take up more space, and we have a small house, and I feel like this is a place where there's so much room. There's so many people that have huge spaces for dogs, and Maybe it would be a better life for Chanclas if she was in one of these big spaces. Look, look at this person's spot. Look at, this, look at this space they have for their dogs. You know? Like, that's what Chanclas needs. So, basically it's like if somebody wants her, they have to take her in the next week or so. Because um, Luna's very attached, you know? Also, Chanclas stinks. She's a stinker. She smells like a dirty dog. Like she's an outdoor dog. She's not. A, she's not a house pet. This is a dog that needs to live 
mainly in a yard, a big yard somewhere, and sleep outside and not come in the house. And I don't know. Anyway, we love chanclas, but uh, she might get the boot. What do you think? Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about chanclas being a big dog? Uh, yeah. Do you think she's going to work in our little house? Uh, like, do you think she'll be happy with us, even though she's not going to get like a true dog's life? Maybe not. Like, I see her in a really, like, big space, you know, where she can be an outdoor dog. Yeah, she's gonna get bigger. She's also a stinker. Like, she needs to be, like, an outdoor stinky beach dog, yeah. you know? Yeah, down at La Punta. A La Punta beach dog. I think so. That's who she is. with Andrea who owns it and we're gonna get in the car and go give out some of the boxes she's already put together she's got families already in mind that are kind of signed up in advance but yeah we're gonna chat with her now well, what's up hi. hi so what is the whole kind of idea behind like why did you decide that you were gonna start doing boxes for people as giveaways well the only reason really is that we are a town that is mostly like sustained by tourism and because of COVID-19 tourism is just not happening for the next, next couple of months at least. And restaurants, uh, hotels, everything is pretty basically shut down and a lot of people are losing their jobs mm -hmm. and therefore are having a hard time getting um, like sourcing like groceries and the idea is to just give these out to people that have either lost their job or are elderly or have uh, people that are uh, sick with like diabetes or hypertension or any of the diseases that could get complicated by COVID. So the idea is to help them out so they can like not leave their homes or to help them out because they have lost their jobs. And each box is good for one person for two weeks? Well, each box is thought out so a family of three or four can eat for a, a full week. And the idea is that I'm going to give these out on a weekly basis to these same families. So right now in Mexico, the like, quarantine is set to be for a month. So this would cover their like basic needs for food for the whole month. And how are people able to donate? It's 380 pesos per, right? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna send a link with the donations page and it's gonna explain what every little box has and the cost of it. So, and like if you want more information on where exactly your box is going or which family it's going to or you want to send a message in the box then that's also and people will be able to donate money online like buy a box online yes uh so i'm gonna set up a donadora page which is just like a, a platform for donations and i'm gonna set like i'm gonna set how much money I need to finish my cause, which which lasts for a whole month. And if you can't donate a full box per week, or like if you can only donate 100 pesos or 200 pesos, then that's fine because you don't need to donate the whole box. You can donate whatever it is, like whatever you can, whatever is possible for you to donate. I will have a link down below. You can just click down there if you want to donate a box. And we're going to go see what they look like and some people getting some. And there'll be more information there in the link if you want any more of it. So here we go.
so we came down here because some of the people that used to work for Andrea, she had to close one of her restaurants and they're out of a job. to help them first, but you know, in these communities, it's like everybody's heard now that someone's dropping off food. And so, you know, everybody's out of a job. Everybody's struggling right now. So now, boom, everyone showed up. She was a little bit surprised and I was like, I knew everyone was going to come. You just got to tell one person. But, you know. I'm from a part. Of, I'm from a part of the country. I'm a part of my country where news travels fast. Gracias. Gracias. Where the? Okay. Now that we handed everything out, I have come to join my amazing family, my real family, my mom and my daughter, and Finn, my quarantine family. <laughs> and of course, chancletas, pizza. What? Okay, later. I'll get it for you tomorrow. How's the pizza, guys? Mm. Yeah? Mm. Delicious. Yeah? Pizza is Do you like the pizza? Boy, boy. Viene con tamales? Si. Hola. Nelly's family is selling tamales to make some extra dough right now. We love tamales. Bueno, bueno. Vegetariana, ¿sí? ¿sí? Seis. Sí. Bueno. Vamos con las copas. No se ha tomado. Bueno, Yurma me dijo que me iba a pasar contacto del dedo. Tamales. Uh -huh. One thing that I love about Mexico is like everybody's just getting creative. Nelly, Nelly and her husband both have their jobs, but um, you know other people in the community don't. And today they just made a bunch of tamales and went around and sold them and made a little extra cash, ten pesos a tamale, and we bought six vegetarians. She wrote to me, "You don't want chicken and mole? Why not?" And it sounded good, but I'm trying to stick with veggies, so. Here we go. Oof. Yummy, yummy tamales. Homemade tamales. Ooh, delicious. Finn's never had a big tamale. <laughs> <laughs> Just them little tamales. Anyway, it's a new day for him here at this house. Damn, these are really good. Like, really good. If she does a weekly order, I'm about to get tamale panza. COVID-19 tamale panza. Coming at ya. Hey, okay, so in the making of this video, in the meantime, like as I make these videos, things change around here. So as of a couple of days ago, they shut the beaches here. And at first they shut the beaches which was part of the three phase rollout we got, but the thing is we haven't had the spike in numbers they said, the government has said that we would need to shut things down. So everything was allowed to be open, but was basically operating at like 30, 40%. And you know, nobody was sitting in restaurants next to each other and whatnot, but you could go to a restaurant, tables were set up, spread out. You know, there would be like maximum four people in a restaurant that normally would have like 20 or 30. Um, lots of people doing takeout. Daycares are still open, but after they close the beaches, they put a federale at the entrance to each beach and you really can't go down. At first I thought it was like, oh yeah, you know, tourists, because there's still tourists here that are like stuck here. Tourists are out like watching sunset and drinking beers and tanning and being idiots, you know, like tourists always are. But what about the people that like walk their dogs like we use beaches like parks you know what about people that walk their dogs that they go swimming they run there a lot of exercise surfing is done in the water and on the water and we're not close together when we do it it's like one or two people on the beach at a time many almost everybody here has a dog and most of them walk them at the beach so like what about that you know so I thought, oh, they'll still let those people down. They're just like getting tourists out. But now there's like a federale at the entrance to every beach. And they also shut every restaurant down. They're all on takeout and delivery now. And it sucks, man, because we have no cases here. 
at all. There's only like at this at this time, there's 1,800 in the country, and almost 700 of them are recovered. You know, with a country of 130 million people, that's not enough to destroy an economy. Um, you know, we're still kind of bracing. We're being told to like act to be at this like. 30% until the end of April and kind of hold the line and everybody's doing it so it kind of sucked to have those things taken away when we're all like doing what we're supposed to be doing and people are not congregating there's not huge groups anywhere I mean it's a ghost town but then I heard it's because of Semana Santa so right now is the big um, vacation time in Mexico and Latin America Semana Santa is around Easter time it's kind of like Christmas break or March break. It's a really big time. It's like closing the beaches in Florida for spring break. Like they had to do that because spring breakers were still going to go there. Well, same idea. Like people from the cities are still going to come to the beach because the idea is, well, if I'm going to be operating at 30%, at least I'll be at the beach. So they closed everything down so that it would show people from cities. Like you don't want to come here for vacation right now. There's nothing to do. I'm hoping that in a week when Semana Santa is over, they're going to open things up for locals again because, like I said, like locals are really reliant. Like the beach is our park. Like that's where we need to go for exercise. That's where we need to go to walk our dogs. It's fine to shut it down for a little while, but like we're not out there tanning and drinking beers in groups and watching sunsets. Like you know, and we're we're using it in the way that we're supposed to. So hopefully that's back. In the meantime, everybody's doing delivery and takeout, and I'm on my way right now to Puerto Verde. I've shown them lots in here to see their grocery store, how they're doing it, and we'll see what's open. But first, coffee. One at a time, baby. So it turns out that they're just like cleaning the store and that's why. See, they're cleaning stuff out and that's why it was closed. Mm -hmm. 